How to measure a time delay using cross correlation. Time delay measurement can be easily done on an oscilloscope if the waveforms before and after the time delay have some identifiable characteristics, such as the fronts or peaks of the test pulses, that can be used as the reference points for direct time delay measurement. What if the test pulses are buried in noises or the test signals are continuous? Like this for instance. In which cases, it is difficult to find the reference points on the waveforms. Here we would like to introduce the cross-correlation method for time delay measurement. What is cross-correlation? Cross-correlation is a measure of similarity of two series as a function of the lag of one relative to the other. It is defined by this formula. Where x and y is a function of time t, tau is the time delay. It can be negative, zero or positive. R is the cross-correlation, which is a function of the time delay tau. When x equals to y, then the cross-correlation becomes autocorrelation. This animation shows autocorrelation process of a cycle of a sine wave. As you can see, the peak of autocorrelation function is reached when the time delay tau is zero. That is, when the two sine waves are aligned precisely with each other on the time axis. This autocorrelation function has only one peak and two troughs. Its width doubles that of the sine pulse. This animation shows autocorrelation process of a sine wave with a limited length. Again, the peak of autocorrelation function is reached when the time delay tau is zero. That is, when the two sine waves are aligned precisely with each other on the time axis. This autocorrelation function has many peaks and troughs. The time interval between two adjacent peaks equals to the period of the signal. Basically, the autocorrelation function of a periodic signal is also periodic. The width of the autocorrelation function doubles that of the length of the sine wave itself. The dwindling of the correlation function at both the negative and positive ends is due to the time window of the sine wave. The data outside the time window or sampling window are assumed to be zero during the correlation calculation. This animation shows the autocorrelation process of a white noise with a limited length. Again, the peak of autocorrelation function is reached when the time delay tau is zero. That is, when the two white noise waves are aligned precisely with each other on the time axis. This autocorrelation function has only one peak and the rest parts of the correlation curve are nearly zero, meaning that different parts of the white noise are uncorrelated. The single peak feature of the autocorrelation function of the white noise can be used for robust and precise time delay measurement. We will demonstrate this later. Now, we are going to use to multi-instrument to demonstrate the autocorrelation functions of some typical waveforms first, and then explain how to use cross-correlation to measure the time delay. The software, multi-instrument, can be downloaded from our website at www.veertins.com or www.multiinstrument.com. We will use its oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, and signal generator functions. The hardware of the setup is a computer with a sound card. The connection from the signal generator to the oscilloscope is through a loopback established at sound card mixer level without any external physical connection. Let's start from scratch. Stop the oscilloscope and signal generator, and then go to setting, ADC device. To establish the loopback, in the device number selection box, Select an item named something like stereo mix, wave out mix or what you hear. If it is not listed there, then you should go to the recording control of the Windows control panel to enable it first. 
Open the signal generator and generate a mono 1 kHz sine wave in both channels. In multi-instrument, cross-correlation is computed using FFT method in order to expedite the process. So select auto-correlation in the spectrum analyzer window. The auto-correlation curve is shown. In multi-instrument, the auto-correlation and cross-correlation are normalized by the energy of the signals. Thus the peak of the normalized auto-correlation is always 1 at the time delay 0. Let's have a look at the auto-correlation functions of other waveforms. Square wave. Yes, the square waveform is not perfect and shows some Gibbs phenomena. This is due to the limited bandwidth of the sound card. Triangle. Sawtooth. White noise. Unlike the previous periodic signals, whose autocorrelation function changes periodically and tapered by the time window. White noise is not periodic at all. In other words, no similarity exists between one part of the white noise to another part of it. Therefore, it has only one autocorrelation peak at the time delay zero. The autocorrelation function is flat at the rest of time delays. In multi-instrument, the signal generator is able to generate two independent and uncorrelated white noise simultaneously in both channels. Let's take a look at this feature. Change the signal generator from mono output to stereo output. Select white noise in channel B as well. Change the autocorrelation to cross-correlation. As you can see, no correlation peak is found. The white noises in the two channels are uncorrelated with each other. Now, we use the multi-tone function of the signal generator to demonstrate how to measure the time delay between two sine waves. Assign a 1 kHz sine wave with an initial phase of 0 to channel A, assign a 1 kHz sine wave with an initial phase of 0 to channel B. As you can see from the screen, the generated two sine waves are identical and the cross-correlation between them is the same as its auto-correlation. The time delay at the correlation peak is 0 and the cross-correlation coefficient of the peak is virtually 1. Let's use DDP viewers to display these two values in larger font. Click the DDP viewer button, in the derived data point selection box, select peak CCF time delay underscore AB, rename it as time delay. Click the DDP viewer button again, in the derived data point selection box, select peak CCFCOEF underscore AB, rename it as cross correlation coefficient. Set the number of decimal places to 2. Now, we change the phase difference between the two channels to minus 45 degrees. Generate the signals. The time delay becomes 125 microseconds, which equals to one-eighth of the period of the signal. Change the phase difference between the two channels to minus 90 degrees. Generate the signals. The time delay becomes 250 microseconds, which equals to one-fourth of the period of the signal. Let's see how robust it is when there is a large amount of noises present in the signals. Open Multitone Configuration dialog box, remove the old assignment, assign a 1 kHz sine wave with an initial phase of 0 and a relative amplitude of 0.5 to channel A. Assign a 1 kHz sine wave with an initial phase of minus 90 degrees and a relative amplitude of 0.5 to channel B. Add a white noise with a relative amplitude of 1 to both channels. Generate the signals. As you can see, although the waveforms on the oscilloscope looks chaotic, the time difference is still correctly detected using cross-correlation. To make it smoother, we can use the average function provided by the spectrum analyzer. For continuous periodic waves, 
it is only possible to measure the time difference between the two waves within a period of the signal. Here we use time difference, not time delay, because from only the captured waveforms, we cannot tell which wave comes earlier and which one comes later, unless we have prior knowledge on this. So this method is actually equivalent to phase difference measurement. Not suitable for general time delay measurement. Remove average for later experiments. What if we use sine bursts instead of continuous sine wave? Let's generate a single channel sine burst first. Change to single channel. Click mask. Let's say we want to generate 10 cycles of 1 kHz sine wave for every second. So enter 0.01 second for mask on duration, enter 0.99 second for mask off duration. In other words, for every second, the 1 kHz sine wave will be let through for 10 milliseconds, and then blocked for the other 990 milliseconds. Click phase lock to make each sine burst start from the same initial phase. Generate the sine burst. Set the oscilloscope frame width to 100 milliseconds. Adjust the trigger level to capture it. Adjust the trigger delay such that the sine wave burst is shifted 90 milliseconds from the left. Stop the oscilloscope and then save the captured data as a wave file. Put back the trigger delay to zero. Then stop the oscilloscope. Go to File, Combine, load the previously saved file. Now, we have two sine bursts, one in channel A, the other in channel B, which lags 90 milliseconds. Change to cross correlation mode. In multi instrument, for cross correlation to work, the FFT size must be at least twice of the record length. The current record length is 4800, thus choose 16384 for the FFT size. The time delay of 90 milliseconds is correctly detected. Using sine bursts as the test signal for time delay measurement based on cross correlation is not very good, as it may be difficult to pick the real correlation peak out of a few peaks with comparable magnitudes, especially under noisy conditions. This problem is caused by the periodic nature of the burst signal. As explained previously, the autocorrelation function of a white noise peaks when the time delay is zero and the rest of the autocorrelation function is very flat and close to zero. Thus white noise is a very good test signal for time delay measurement using cross-correlation. Because there is only one distinct cross-correlation peak. Let's generate a 1 seconds white noise using the loopback mode at software level. Select IA equals OA and IB equals OB on the signal generator panel. We extract data from the 0 to 100 seconds. Save it in WAV file 1. Then extract data from the 75th second to 175th second. And save it in wave file 2. Therefore, these two wave files have a common white noise section, from the 75th to 100th second of the original white noise file. Open wave file 2. Then select file, combine, to combine wave file 1. Now, we have wave file 2 in channel A, and wave file 1 in channel B. Note that the common section is at the start of channel A and end of channel B, separated by 75 milliseconds. Now, let's see how cross correlation works. Change to cross correlation mode.
set the FFT size to be greater than double of the record length. As you can see, the time delay of 75 milliseconds is accurately detected. In conclusion, time delay measurement can be done on oscilloscope if the waveforms before and after the time delay have some identifiable characteristics such as fronts and peaks. Autocorrelation or cross-correlation based time delay measurement is robust even in noisy environment. The test signal for correlation based time delay measurement can be burst type of periodic signal, or non-periodic signal such as white noise. The latter is more robust. We will follow up with some application examples such as sound speed measurement using cross-correlation technique. Verdim's technology. Turn a PC into multiple virtual instruments.